Good evening, you have some lots on the ramp today. I've got a 2013 Vauxhall Mariva and we are going to be replacing the timing chain on it. Now this car has covered 75,000 miles. So we get involved and get this vehicle done. Now, first thing I'm going to be doing is disconnecting the battery negative first. Now I already have gone ahead and removed the rock cover and the coil pack. Um, we're going to make a start, take the vehicle up in the air, drain the oil out of it, drain the coolant out of it, get the air box off, I think. Right, let's get plodding. in. Well, with this car now in the air, I'm just about to drain the oil out of it, and I've noticed that it has got quite a bad oil leak on it. I don't know if you can see. Absolutely saturated in oil. Um, I think we'll be replacing the rock cover and the timing cover. That's probably going to be fixing it because that's the area that it's leaking from. Now, I don't know whether you can see already, I have got the engine support because I'm going to be dropping it down shortly and removing the engine mounts. Well, I've now made a tiny little bit of progress. We've moved the alternator belt, water pump pulley, uh, the alternator belt tensioner, because that bolt's just out there. Now, we're going to go to a point now where I need to time the engine up. So what I'm going to be doing is using a Shaffler Rep, -ex Rep Expert timing kit. We need that bar and that bar for now. Let's put it back together. We need that one there to time it up on the camshafts. Right. Should we get these fitted? All right, well, this engine now it is timed up at top dead centre. So, what we're doing, taking number one spark plug out, drop a screwdriver down the hole, wind it over, and wait for that screwdriver to come. Right back up to the top. We've just gone past it. We can wind it back, it's not a problem. And then we can slide the camshaft tool just into the cutouts. You might have to just get a 21mm spanner. Oh, I'll have one in a minute. and just give them camshafts a tiny little bit of a wiggle and they will slot in. Once we've finished everything up at the top, we can get the vehicle up in the air. Now, there is a little T55 bung that you need to remove, which is that, and then we can get that crank locking pin. And that should, if you've done everything right, should slide in just like that make sure it is butted up tight to the block now what I like to do give me a little ratchet and just give it a gentle tug like that and that'll stop that tool falling out you know what there's nothing worse than when you're doing these jobs and the cars up and down up and down up and down on the ramp now I finished with everything underneath for now we need to now remove the camshaft actuators which are just by here and when you do remove them just put an i and an e inlet and exhaust now also these pickup rings here on the camshaft just put a little line so you know that that goes at the top because it can fit different ways and you'll get a timing fault now i'm just going to grab 21 mil on the camshaft and a 24 on the center bolt I'm going to crack them off. When you're doing this, you want to grab your spanner and pull it towards you and push your ratchet away from you and they are tight. And it will just slacken off pretty much a little bit like that. I've already done that one. Right. Well, I have scoodle along. Is that a word? A scoodle? I don't know. But we're going to make it up. Today's new word is scoodle. Now, as you can see, that tension there is quite far out. And I have got the timing cover off, obviously. Got it in my lovely little receptacle. Now, every single nut and bolt for this has been put into a cardboard piece of cardboard because they are different lengths, different sizes to make sure they go back in the same hole. And the same applies to the water pump, because they're all different lengths as well. And we don't want to be putting a long peg in a short hole. Right, 
Um, and we get this tensioner, push back now, put a little locking pin in it, just to keep the tension off it. We can get these T30s and get this chain off. We are now into the next day. Now I have gone ahead and done a little bit of cleaning. And everything down there is looking like brand new. And how I've done it is a wire brush on the end of a drill and a little bit of brake and clutch cleaner. And it's all looking like brand new. Even the timing cover, we clean it down the best we can inside and out. Before we start putting it back together, now I have done this over the years myself. I've put all the chain on. And I've <laughs> got to put the gasket on. I won't be the first and I won't be the last. Now, these are the old parts. The intake exhaust, the guides, the tensioner, the top guide and the bottom gear. We're going to go ahead now and get these new parts fitted. Now there's no intake or exhaust on these. Either side will fit if you get me. Look posh to me. Right, let's get them on. That now is all built back up. Um, everything that we've talked up, we've put a tiny little bit of yellow on them. So we know that they are talked and we have followed all the technical information to make sure it is perfect. Before we put the timing cover on, you do need to remove that pin out of the tensioner because as you slide in the timing cover back on, you've got to get it through that hole there and that definitely ain't going in there. Before we put that timing cover on, I'm just going to pull the corners of the gasket just back a little bit and put a tiny little bit of sealant behind it and in front of it and also some all the way along here so it should seal right so we get this cover back on with a little bit of magic that timing cover is now back on and we need to get all the timing cover bolts talked up to spec rooney now i've had a look on auto data let me have a little look and i can't find anything for the timing cover so i've had to go into the launch professional database which is part of Haynes Pro and straight away we've got timing cover M10 is 35 Newton meters and the M8 is 8 uh, no the M6 is is it 8 oh, I can't get my words out it's Friday 8 Newton meters let's get talking them up everything is now talked up to spec Rooney and I've gone ahead and put the crankshaft pulley on make sure that your timing pin is still in the bottom down there and we're going to go ahead the timing tool on the top and what that does when you pull the pin obviously the chain slack and then you tighten this little come zoom in you tighten that up to whatever it stays and then you can pull these up so if I go ahead now and get the pin from there and I should pull it and you will see it move well ever so slightly that chain is now nice and tight and we can go ahead now and tighten that little bracket up. With tension now on that chain, we need to go ahead and grab that tool. And without this, this car is never going to run. Or if it does, it'll run like a bag of... Well, I can't really swear. You see where I marked them originally? With the yellow blob there? And there? Now, these pickup rings, you can go there. Or there and if you get it wrong you're going to be getting faults and it's going to be a pain that's why i always mark it get that tool locked in now make sure everything's aligned up correctly then we can just nip these up and tighten that center bolt on the camshaft go ahead now and get these camshafts talked up to spec 20 mil mil on your camshaft and of course this time you're going to be pushing and pulling we've got what we got 50 newton meters and then 60 degrees that's 50 on that one. That's 50 on that one. Let's get that set up. 60 degrees. Now these digital torque wrenches, they are insane. I 
and that is 60 degrees. Let's move around to this one now. And that is 60 degrees. Right, should we go ahead now and get it put back together? With a little bit of magic, that car now is all put back together. We're not worried about making it nice and pretty and clean just yet. We need to get it running. Now, I'm going to jump in the car. Let me flip my camera around. I'm going to wind it over. Where's me pulling this thing? I'm going to get that oil pressure up. Make sure we've done everything right. Wang it over and make sure we get good oil pressure. I think that's enough. All right, let's now couple up the coil packs, or the coil packs, should I say, and get on the key. We've got some fresh oil in it, coolant. I'm going to see now if it starts. See, we've got two choices, isn't it? It either does or it doesn't. I'm hoping it does. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. No warning lights. And it's sounding like a little single sewing machine. Absolutely. Perfect. All I'm going to do with this vehicle now is leave a tick over, let it up to, get up to temperature. I'm going to be constantly monitoring the short-term, long-term fuel trim, the temperature, the engine RPM, while I have just that little bit of a tidy up because it does get a little bit cluttered when you're doing jobs like this. Right, let's give it a, well, I'm going to be 10 minutes or so. 10 minutes or so. Well, all my tools are now pretty much put away. I've got the car still ticking over. And we've just got it up in the air and we're checking for leaks. I have already cleaned that sump down. So if we've got any leaks, we're going to be seeing it straight away. Ticking over. Absolutely perfect. Now, I've given everything a clean down. Wiped all my grubby handprints off the front of the vehicle. I've got a, the driver's side wheel to put back on. And I'm going to get it off the ramp and take it for a little bit of a test drive. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you have a good weekend. And if you have liked the video, please click that like and subscribe. Or even drop us a comment. Get involved. Drop us a little bit of a comment. But yeah, anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Let's get it sent.